Hey everybody, how's it going? Today is uh, introduction to chapter 12, which is services or Rubenstein chapter 12 anyway, um, starting out the actual unit six, uh, the new unit six that is in the AP curriculum. Um, today, obviously I'm not gonna use the, the slides, so I'm just gonna use a straight webcam and some super high-tech dry erase technology. All right, so today what we're talking about is Christoller and central place theory. Before we can talk about central place theory, you have to know these particular words, central place, range, threshold, and market area. Some people also refer to it as hinterland, but that's kind of an older word that you can see and they're basically interchangeable. I'm not gonna talk about those so that we've got time to talk about central place theory. Go to the slides or go to the Quizlet or to the book and look those up because they're all well-defined there. What's confusing though is central place theory. So hang on, there are the words that change. I'm just leaving those there. Um, what's confusing though is actual central place theory. When you look at it in the book, it's uh, kind of messy looking. So let's see if we can make some sense out of that. All right, the way the central place theory works is it functions around obviously a central place. And the idea is that this particular central place is big, but there are different sizes of central places and um, that they all fit together and they form kind of a network of different um, access to services depending on what the need of the service is. So for our little demonstration here to start with, let's say that this is the biggest central place around, which for us here in Silverdale would be Seattle. Okay. The idea of central place theory is that every central place has its own market area, which is to say the area from which it draws customers or consumers. And for a big city, that market area would be very big because of the different levels of services that they offer. For instance, the only place that you're going to be able to see a pro sports game is in Seattle. Uh, locally, that is close by. The only place that you're going to get to do some like high-end shopping, say Nordstrom or something, uh, uh, Apple Store or whatever, is in Seattle. So you're gonna be willing to travel a long way for that. That, by the way, is range. There are the willing people, are, the distance people are willing to travel to get in. Okay, so central place theory also functions around the idea that arranged around these market areas are smaller central places. Okay, so for us again in the Seattle area, um, we'd say this is Seattle and this is Tacoma. You might say this is Bremerton, although it doesn't really line up with the uh, city, smaller city, town, hamlet, that kind of thing. Don't worry about it. Let's just say this is Bremerton then. Each of those central places has its own market area. That market area tends to cross over with the others. Bremerton itself offers certain uh, services that people are willing to travel for, but a shorter distance because they're not as desirable services. Then you get your much smaller central place, which would be for us, Silverdale. Let's see the different size of the dots represents the different sizes of the central places. Silverdale also has its own market area, smaller than the rest of them, but still kind of coinciding. Now, this doesn't line up very nicely with the way that it looks in the book with all the hexagons. What the hexagons do is they just make sure that these overlapping market areas that I'm putting in here with circles, when they're circles, you get kind of this negative space here. Hexagons just make it work better. That's it. Either way, the idea is that everything here nests together. Everything fits together with the different central places. Uh, kind of ends up looking like a molecule or an atom. Okay. What it doesn't say in the book is that the central place is essentially infinite across the, the plane of geography. So here's Seattle. On the other hand, way down here would be another big central place, Portland. Portland would then have its own market area that would basically cross over here. So those in, say, um, not Vancouver, but let's say Centralia or maybe you know, Tacoma might be willing to drive that far for particular services. So central place theory in as short as I could put it in. Drop any questions that you have and I'll do my best to answer. Talk to y'all later.